Philip Finch is Global Bank Strategist at UBS, and he joins us now. Philip, thank you so much for coming in. In terms of banks, there's so much concern, what we've had concern over the last month or so, but it seems that today we're also concerned about volatility, about that volatility staying, increasing, and about lawsuits coming from the U.S. Yeah, good morning. Um, yeah, it's a very difficult time now for the uh, European banking system, but also, I would say, globally as well. It's a confidence game, and we're seeing confidence being undermined here. Um, in Europe, it's clearly an issue of um, the uh, political will towards resolving the European sovereign crisis, and, and we feel that that's escalating at the moment. Um, the end game, probably, in our house view, uh, a, a eurobond, a system of cross-guarantees. We don't feel we're getting there just yet. There's no political support for that. So in order to get there, we've, we fear that the crisis has to escalate. But, Philip, I wonder whether, you know, there's been so much um, d downgrading, or at least the shares have fallen by so much since the beginning of the year. Banking as a whole is, in fact, the biggest loser. Is there not a point where you say, we are, you know, it is uncertain, but actually these banks will recover, and certainly in terms of P-E ratios, they look pretty cheap? Yeah, valuations do look interesting. But at the moment, it doesn't seem to matter that much, sector valuations. As I said, it's very much uh, a risk appetite, a market confidence issue. Now, until investors see confidence return, policy response, being on top of things, I think uh, valuations will pay, play a secondary consideration. Are we going to see a, a big bank go, a Lehman Brothers type, or is, is this out of the question? No, we don't expect bank failures in the manner of Lehman Brothers. I think we've learned a lot from, from that experience. But what we have been seeing in the last few months, the last couple of months in particular, is the crisis of confidence has spilled over into bank funding markets. So maybe two months ago we started to see a dollar squeeze as U.S. money market funds started to, to pull away from owning bank, European bank debt. And in the last few weeks we've seen uh, the interbank market come under stress again uh, with euro libor spreads shooting up quite dramatically. Now ultimately, if confidence continues to deteriorate, we could end up with a run on deposits at certain banks. It, in what kind of length of time? We were just hearing from Joseph Akerman this morning saying, you know, market conditions remind him of 2008. That's when we really got the, the financial crisis. What, if we do see, you know, a run on banks, is it going to be the next six months? It's difficult to predict, to be honest, but I think what we have to be careful is that things can escalate really quickly. You know, and, and if the market believes that policymakers, politicians are not on top of things, then things could quickly uh, deteriorate. In terms of regional banks, you're saying that, of course, there's so much volatility, so much investor fear that it's difficult to, to, to get any investor, really, to buy in, in any banks. But are Swiss banks healthier in terms of balance sheets than, than the European counterparts? Yeah, without doubt, I'd say that the large Swiss banks are one of the best capitalized banks in the world. Um, the, the regulatory uh, backdrop is, has been more stringent, um, and that certainly, I would say, puts them in a stronger position in terms of balance sheet strength. Um, having said that, you know, there are difficulties in terms of capital markets, and, and this has played an important part of, of, of revenue contribution. And, you know, th with risk appetite clearly undermined, this affects that business model. And so how does the Europe stack up with, with some of the U.S. counterparts? Again, you know, we're seeing a lot of lawsuits that will impact actually mm -hmm. cross-Atlantic. Well, first of all, from a balance sheet perspective, we, we would argue that U.S. banks in general have stronger balance sheets. Um, if you recall, in 2009, we had the U.S. US banking stress test where a lot of common equity was raised on the back of that and earlier this year the Federal Reserve they did their own stress test and gave the green light for a number of US banks to, to start uh, paying more dividends and buying back shares so from a capital perspective we're, we're quite confident that most banks are, are, are well well positioned Captain, yeah. in, in the US and the other thing that stands out I say the US versus Europe in terms of banks balance sheets on the funding side where clearly we don't seem to see any stresses on that front whereas clearly here in Europe we do have them. But having said all of that, there are difficulties, as you highlighted. I mean, the housing market is still very weak, and there are concerns on, on top-line revenue growth or the lack of it. And, of course, these mortgage lawsuits are the latest things that's clearly weighing on, on risk appetite. Uh, what about UK banks? Now, they're quite heavily hit today, they're down some 5% for RBS, I believe. And, of course, next Monday is when we're going to see, finally, this UK Independent Banking Commission. Certain land is saying that will actually shave off a, a big proportion of the revenue. 
Yeah, I mean, the, the ICB report in itself, I think, should be viewed positively in the sense that up until now you've had a lot of uncertainty, and uncertainty is not good, whether it's for management in terms of planning or for investors in terms of risk premiums. Um, now, there's been press reports in the last few days that maybe uh, the recommendations of the ICB gets pushed back to 2015 or, or even gets yeah. watered down, uh, both of which I think would be a positive for the stock. Now, Phil, you know, earlier on in the interview you were telling me that actually something is going to, or we may see a trigger that, that's going to, to um, trigger a big sell-off. I was wondering, is this going to be just more investor fear? Is it going to be one thing that we won't be able to handle? Is it going to be economic data, corporate earnings? What is the one you know, key piece of data mm -hmm. that you're watching out for for, for a big market sell-off? Yeah, it's difficult to highlight any event um, to, to flag at this stage. I think it's going to be a combination of one continued um, GDP data or kind of economic data that's disappointing or weak. Two, no doubt we're going to get more um, credit rating downgrades of sovereigns, and I think that's certainly going to weigh on, on risk appetite and sentiment. And, and thirdly, I guess just the realization that um, there is no near-term political solution to yeah. this crisis. And a combination of three, I think, will probably lead to 10-year uh, bond yields in Italy and Spain to go up further and we've seen them go back over to 5% again no. uh, in the last few days. Uh, very quickly, we have 20 seconds left. It's, you know, RBS down some 6%, Lloyd's similar losses. How much of a correction are we going to see on these banking stocks over the year? Can they still fall 10-20%? It's difficult to say. I mean, we, we've, we are positive on Barclays. We've got to buy on Lloyds. We think they're already corrected more than enough. Our preference, um, whilst we're very cautious in Europe, we do prefer U um, UK banks. We think yeah. they're better positioned. So, at, you know, we just recently upgraded Barclays to buy, and I, I'll say at these levels, you know, they do look attractive. It's cheap. All right. Philip, thank you. Philip Finch Pleasure. there.